Ever since the days of ancient Greek gladiators, people have loved to watch warriors fight until the bitter end. And while in the modern day we've seemingly ditched actual fights to the death for ones of fiction, for some reason, people still love to watch a good fight. I mean, why do you think Evo's so damn popular? And today's combatants are not only the strongest warriors in their universes, but they're by far the most skilled in all of fiction. We're of course talking about Excalibur, the demon spawn lion of the seventh layer of hell from Rivals of the Aether. And Vincent, the legendary brawler of the light realm from the CPU CS. I'm Gripplepop, your badass and nerdy host. And I'm Nameless Co-host. Yes, that's my name, at least till his douche comes up with something better. And holy shit, why am I not blocky anymore? Why aren't you blocky anymore? What the hell happened to us? Ah, I see you've noticed our new designs. Well, you can thank Chell for these amazing new renders. I'll leave a link to her Twitter where she posts all sorts of amazing artwork in the description down below. So I hope you guys go check out her Twitter, and without further ado, I believe we have the rest of this fight to get to. So, uh, where, where the hell was I? Uh, ah, here we go. Today, we're going to overanalyze Alfred's two overpowered brawlers to find out who would win in a fight to the death. Rivals of the Aether on the surface looks like any other indie Smash clone, with a colorful cast of characters and, of course, Shovel Knight as a guest character, because literally every single fucking indie game has to have Shovel Knight in it for some reason. Well, I mean, if Nintendo won't let people play as the armored Scrooge Duck over there, then someone has to. Yeah, someone, not everyone. I mean, the man has his own platform fighter now. You, you can't escape this shovel wheelie bastard. But regardless of the Shovel Knight plague that seems to be spreading through indie games, we have a character to cover, and shockingly, this game's story doesn't start where you'd expect it to. Wait, this game has a story? I just thought it was an elemental furry fighting simulator. I mean, you're kind of right. Allow me to introduce you to Aether High, a place where love fills the air and everyone's favorite badass animal brawlers are all douchebags or designed in such a way that will make you ask deep, deep questions about your sexuality that you likely aren't ready to answer. What the fuck is this shit? How many updates did I miss by this damn game? And most importantly, why the hell did they make Xenoburn look like a complete and utter Chad? Dude, you think that's bad? Look what they did to Raster, he's such a douche! Hey, what's up, chicky birds? It's me, Raster. Yeah. Okay, but why, though? Dude, fuck if I know. Hey, wait a second, what the hell did that title screen just say? Lovers of the Aether. What the fuck is this? Is this some stupid dating sim? This isn't Rivals of the Aether. Why the hell are you stalling so much? And more importantly, why the hell do you have this downloaded on your computer? Well, uh, you see, uh, uh, uh hey, don't we need to talk about Excalibur's backstory? Uh, uh, uh here, here we go. Excalibur comes from the seventh layer of hell and is said to be the strongest warrior to ever exist in the Rivals universe. I guess you could say that he's unrivaled in power. And? A and what? W why are you saying and? Are you going to fish talking about his backstory? I did, that's literally his whole backstory. Seriously, that's it? Yeah, Alfred didn't exactly write a book about Excalibur. The only other thing we know is that he's related to everybody's favorite example of mediocrity in physical form, Jericho the OK. Yeah, that's actually that guy's name. Poor Jericho, man. It's a fucked up nickname. You know what, after trying to wrap my head around Mermaid Man and his 40 different origin stories, I am perfectly okay with Excalibur lacking a backstory. Well, with Excalibur's very expansive and intricate backstory out of the way, we have quite a few powers to cover. Oh yeah, as you may or may not have noticed, Excalibur's mane is made of actual fucking fire. That's so so black. Somehow. But despite how illogical that is, it's still badass as all hell. However, his fire's downright preposterous color scheme doesn't change the fact that his flames are able to light his opponents on fire. That is, when Excalibur hits him with one of his four special moves. Such as his side special, where he throws a fireball that flies through the air and ignites his foes on contact. Although, they do have a tendency to disappear from the universe if they travel too far without hitting anything. Hey, wait a second. A flaming cat brawler? Why does that sound so familiar? But Excalibur isn't much of a zoner, as he way prefers to fight up close and personal. Which is where his neutral special comes into play, because apparently the Rivals cast has the balls to approach a flaming lion from hell. That's way more than I can say about most people. Dude, you don't have the balls to get anywhere near a lion, regardless of if they're on fire or not. Well, I mean, I do have the balls to get close to Leone. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying that she's killed people for saying way less than that. Oh, uh, uh, oh uh, well, what? Uh, were we talking about his neutral special, right? <laughs> 
Well, Excalibur's neutral special has him charge up a burst of fire that then erupts out from his body, igniting enemies and working as a great get-off-me tool if anyone decides to get too close. A flaming cat brawler who has a get-off-me tool that burns his opponents. You know, that kind of sounds like Incineroar. With his down special, Excalibur punches the ground, blasting out flames all around him and leaving flames on the ground that can light people on fire if they step on him. Or if he's airborne when he uses his attack, he can channel his inner sands and dunk on his opponent as he leaps into the air before flying downwards, causing a blast of fire to burst out, leaving flames on the ground that can ignite his opponents. He leaps into the air before plummeting downwards with a flaming blast? That's just Cross Chop! Excalibur is just fucking Incineroar! What a blatant ripoff! Actually, it's the other way around, buddy. Smash Brothers Ultimate released on December 7th, 2018, whereas the official Excalibur costume released for Rivals of the Aether on March 7th, 2018, which means that Mr. Sakurai ripped off of Rivals when making Incineroar's moveset. So in the immortal words of myself, suck it! Wow, I just got schooled by you. As a whole new low. Well, Sakurai copying Rival's homework aside, we still have one more special move to cover, and it's by far Excalibur's favorite move. Wait, you're telling me the Flaming Slam Dunk isn't his favorite move? It seems like by far his most versatile one. I mean, it literally leaves a fire trap on the ground. Well, yeah, but Excalibur's favorite move would actually be his up special, where he engulfs himself in fire before flying in a direction of his choice and burning his victims. Wait, what, what the hell's so special about the discount version of Falco's shitty recovery move? On top of burning his opponents, Excalibur also seems to possess the ability to combo into any attack out of his up special. Like, literally anything, and this is despite the fact that his up special is meant to leave him falling helplessly back down to the ground. Okay, so he can string a few hits together and light his opponents on fire, but I fail to see how he's any more dangerous than other rivals like that Zetaburn guy who looks suspiciously like Excalibur. Well, you see, the reason that every one of his special moves lights his enemies on fire is because Excalibur has the ability to deal extra damage and knockback when he lands a strong attack on an enemy that's on fire because apparently a lion ripping into you with his claws isn't scary enough. Obviously, he needed a stat-boosting ability. Holy shit, who the hell thought an actual fucking lion needed the ability to kill you faster? I mean, the only thing I can think of that would be more dangerous than Overkill would be a bear with chainsaws for hands. Oh, don't worry, buddy, it gets so much more dangerous. As on top of having razor-sharp claws and teeth and his fire, Excalibur also wields a real-ass sword. Why? Why would they give a lion a sword? I was joking about the chainsaw bear. I don't actually think we should give animals fucking weapons. Oh, don't worry, Excalibur doesn't use this sword for combat. He only uses it to taunt his foes by, you know, sticking it into the ground. Or in the air. Did he just stab that sword into the fabric of the universe? I'm not entirely sure, so instead of trying to wrap my brain around that anomaly of the universe, let's just go ahead and talk about Excalibur's feats. So we're just gonna ignore him stabbing the universe. Okay then, uh, well Excalibur's pretty damn strong. His Alpharetta has stated that he's seven times stronger than Zetaburn, who managed to burn down a whole town. On top of that, Excalibur's also shown he can easily defeat any of the other rivals in the game, which includes Absa, who can create a massive storm that covers an entire mountain range, and Edelus, who wields the full power of a glacier. You know, that same kind of thing that took down the Titanic. On top of that, Excalibur can also hold his own against Workshop Luigi, and while he did lose the fight, he did manage to fight against Sandberg for a little bit. Excalibur is also stupid fast, as he can react to and dodge fireballs from Zetaburn and lightning attacks from Absa. But most impressively was the time that Excalibur ran Major through both time and space. The same Major who would go on to fight in the CPUCS, and Excalibur Excalibur himself was able to react to and tech off a wall without any input from Alpharad, and Alpharad's fast enough to outmatch a turbo mode controller. Excalibur's tough enough to take on the entire cast of rivals of the Aether, who as we mentioned could do things like burn down towns, create storms that cover mountain ranges, and even use the full force of a fucking glacier. Although thanks to global warming, I don't know how effective that's going to be later on. And he should be tougher than Jericho the OK, who managed to fight and beat the Gatekeepers. Keep in mind that all the rivals had to team up to beat the Gatekeepers in the main storyline. On top of that, Excalibur is also super skilled, as according to Alfred, anyone who plays him can't fully use him effectively, which includes both Major, who eventually went on to fight in the CPU CS, and Alfred, who's beaten Hungrybox in a game of Smash Ultimate, and trained hard DK, who can beat some of the best Smash Brothers players of all time. Yeah, but Excalibur isn't perfect, as he does have a weakness to water because, you know, he uses fire for a lot of his attacks, and he does struggle against opponents with superior melee range, which just begs the question of why he doesn't use that sword for, you know, fighting? Well, regardless of any minor weaknesses Excalibur may have, he's still one hell of a fighter that you wouldn't want to be your rival. Major, I think I'm gonna break out my OC. Oh, dang. Excalibur the Beast from the seventh level of hell. <laughs> what is that? That's it his really, name. It really rolls off the tongue. Yeah, look at him. Have you ever noticed that, like, every good anime has a tournament arc in it? I mean, Dragon Ball and Keijo are just non-stop tournament arcs, and My Hero Academia even did a tournament arc. I can name plenty of good animes that haven't done tournament arcs, like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Panty and Stocking, and SpongeBob SquarePants, aka your favorite anime to pin up against My Hero Academia. For some reason. I still don't understand why we did Suyu vs. the Tattletale Strangler. Because it's the greatest fight of all time. Goku vs. Superman has nothing on Suyu vs. the Tattletale Strangler. But, uh, you know SpongeBob isn't an anime, right? Nor is it my favorite. 
In actuality, the coveted title of my favorite anime goes to the CPU CS. I don't think that qualifies as an anime either. That's quite literally just a bunch of idiots on the internet watching computers fight in a children's video game. Well, it's, yeah, but it's got better storytelling than My Hero Academia, and you can quote me on that one. Wow, that is actually amazing. I didn't think it was possible to lose all your credibility with one statement. Well, I'm glad I could teach you something new, my esteemed co-host. But we don't have time to focus on that statement that'll surely get me beaten up at a Comic-Con. We actually have a backstory to cover. Do we actually have a backstory to cover? Or is this like Excalibur and his whole one sentence of backstory? Uh, well, I mean, I could, like, sum this one up to a handful of paragraphs. Well, at least that's something, unlike that hell beast we just covered. God, why did the cool one have to have such a fucking lame backstory? Well, we started our story many years ago, and by many years ago, I actually just mean about a year ago, when a new tournament circuit for all the greatest warriors was just starting to form. These tournaments would bring warlocks, race car drivers, gods, swordsmen, soldiers, and more together to duke it out to see who was truly the greatest warrior in all of the Light Realm. But despite who would come out on top in these tournaments, they would typically end up facing the strongest combatant the Light Realm had to offer in Thug Finals. And that combatant was Vincent. But, but not, not, it's not Van Gogh. This one has both of his ears. At least I think he does. But uh, d despite how unstoppable Vincent may have seemed, as he effortlessly beat down tournament winner after tournament winner, Vincent would eventually be beaten in Thug Finals by Zelda, where he would then officially join the tournament circuit, taking home multiple victories and eventually leading the Light Realm into battle against the Dark Realm, where he would die in battle against Blood Falcon while defending his realm from darkness. Wow, that actually had a story with, like, arcs and character development. I was not expecting that from a YouTube show about computers fighting in a children's video game. Yeah, like I said, it's better written than My Hero Academia. Did you not believe me? Of course I didn't. One of them is the greatest anime ever written according to the general population. Yeah, and the other one's My Hero Academia. That's not what I was gonna say. Ah. Pretty sure it was what you were gonna say. But regardless, Vincent has a bunch of special moves that he can use to take down his foes that we need to go ahead and cover. Alright, sure, we'll just move past your statements that just destroy your credibility bit by bit. Uh, let's see, what can this old fart even do? Uh, ah, here we go. With his helicopter kick, Vincent can leap high into the air and propel himself upwards by spin kicking at rapid speed. Think of it like a salad spinner of death, but instead of creating a tasty salad, it just turns his victims into Burger King foot lettuce. But if Vincent wants to take an airborne target out of the air, he can always use his leaping axe kick. With this move, he does a leaping flip kick into the air before doing a powerful axe kick right after, slamming his victims into the ground or spiking them into the bottomless pit below. Because fighting Vincent ends one of two ways. Either he takes you down with him, or he walks all over your face. Uh, sure. Anyway, Vincent can also perform the fiend jump, where he gracefully backflips through the air like Zero Suit Samus, minus the bikini, thankfully, before landing to avoid an attack. Or he can always cancel that attack to perform a swift dive kick, doing a good amount of damage to his opponent. But if Vincent wants a more head-first approach to battle, he can always use his head on assault. With this move, he jumps high into the air before flipping around and then crashing straight down onto his enemy head-first. How the hell does he not have brain damage if that's one of his special moves? Well, I mean, he is wearing a hat. That's got to cushion the blow at least a little bit. I highly doubt that Bray is going to soften the impact of a man falling from the sky onto a 600-pound gorilla faster than the speed of fucking light. Have you ever tested that? No, mostly because I don't have a beret, and I lack the ability to jump that high. I I'm just saying, those sound like a whole bunch of excuses to me. Oh, fuck off. Ugh. Don't we have more special moves to cover anyway? Well, yeah, we actually have five left to cover, and one of those would be the flaming dropkick. With this move, Vincent ignites his legs before flying at his victim and dropkicking them square in the face, which is both devastating and cool as all hell. Or, uh, I, I guess it's hot because fire? <laughs> With his suplex, Vincent dashes forward before grabbing his opponent around the waist and doing a backflip, slamming his victim's head into the ground and likely shattering every bone in their body. Or you can always use Onslaught, which has him dash his enemy before pummeling them with a vicious flurry of punches and kicks. Ha! Huh, that kind of looks like every match of Marvel vs. Capcom I've ever played. But by far, Vincent's favorite and most powerful attack would be the Vincent Kick. With this move, Vincent lifts up his leg before charging up with flames and unleashing a devastating kick that blows up on contact. Think of it like a badass combination of the Falcon Punch and Ryu's and Diarrhea Joke Foot. So, it's a Falcon Shit Kick? No, oh god, it's just, that's fucking disgusting. My co-host's disgustingness aside, if all else fails, Vincent can bust out his finishing move, where he kicks his enemy high into the air and then proceeds to jump up and wail on them in the most violent way humanly possible. Honestly, I'm surprised this game wasn't rated M for that move alone. Like, seriously, this is by far the most violent attack in the game, and Joker just actually shoots people with a gun. Wait, they let that into a children's game? I haven't seen something that horrific since Kano's fatality in DC vs Mortal Kombat. Well, with all of Vincent's special moves out of the way, we need to talk about what Vincent's accomplished, and oh, Oh dear lord, has he done a lot. Oh yeah. In his first appearance, he easily mopped the floor of the cast of Super Smash Brothers, who has shown that they can take down Master Hand. 
And Vincent should be no stranger to fighting some of the strongest warriors in the CPU CS, such as Toy Convict. On top of that, Vincent's also fought and beaten himself from another timeline in the form of Dark Vincent, who destroyed the entire timeline. And Vincent's also managed to fight and defeat Galeem, who had control over hundreds of master hands and could one-shot Taboo. Vincent's fast enough to react to Gun Mario's laser blast, and he's more than capable of keeping up with the cast of Super Smash Brothers, who can keep up with Master Hand. Keep in mind that Master Hand can fly across galaxies in mere seconds. He's also been able to keep up with Galeem, whose light attacks managed to cover an entire galaxy in mere moments. He's tough enough to trade blows with Dark Vincent, Toy Convict, Audible Link, as well as Goleem, and of course the normal cast of Super Smash Bros. Vincent's also a master warrior, as he's beaten down trained swordsmen like Audible Link, his previous bully Toy Convict, and even himself from another timeline in the form of Dark Vincent. Wait, previous bully? How the hell are Vincent and Toy Convict the same age? Vincent looks like he be sparring partners with Mermaid Man, and Toy Convict looks like he's going through his emo phase of high school. Out of all the things we just talked about, that's the one you're going to question? I mentioned fighting himself from another timeline like four times in the feats section alone. Uh, touche, actually. Uh, and anyway, Vincent isn't perfect. He does solely rely on melee combat and lacks any weapons or projectile options, which does mean opponents with projectiles and weapons can zone him out. On top of that, Vincent likes to go for risky and stylish plays, which have screwed him over in the past. But even with those weaknesses, Vincent is one combatant that you don't want to meet in Thug Finals. What I was saying, though, we thought Vincent was a heel, but now we know he just lived in the shadow of Toy Convict in his earlier days. And he is here. Oh, Larios and Larios, he's about to hit the... Oh, no, is this it for a hero? Oh, oh my God. God. He was trying to take him down, man. That was almost curtains. And he's bringing them down to Wuhu Island. He's got Starman on deck. And he's got Tiki. Hey, Tiki. Vin, just live a little longer. And you will get that vindication on your middle school bully. Oh, oh my gosh. Toy Topic falls to Vincent in the closest game we've had yet. And you can tell that wasn't just about getting first place. That match was personal. Oh, that was breathtaking. Did that All right, our combatants are set. But only one elite warrior can come out on top in a fight to the death. Um, I'm not exactly sure how an elite, an old man, and a flaming lion can be. But we don't have time to talk about any of that. We have a fight to get to. Well, without further ado, let's settle this. Vincent is running through the forest as he quickly approaches a stunned Link. As Vincent approaches, he jumps up in the air and spin kicks Link, hitting him in the head, causing him to fly back and slam against an invisible barrier that covers the forest. The announcer's voice echoes throughout the arena. Game! Vincent lands as he wipes the sweat from his forehead as his friends Skillshare Kirby and Parsec Falcon walk over to congratulate him on winning the tournament. Right as Kirby offers Vincent a maximum tomato to recover from the fight, a fireball flies through the air, hitting Falcon in the head, sending him flying into the barrier, causing an explosion. Vincent quickly eats the maximum tomato as Excalibur jumps from a tree and dive kicks into Kirby, and falls up with a powerful uppercut that launches Kirby into the top of the barrier, causing a massive explosion. The announcer's voice then cuts through the silence. Excalibur versus Vincent! A brawl is early brewing! Fight! As soon as the announcer stops talking, Excalibur throws out a fireball at Vincent, who flips through the air and lands behind Excalibur, before he dashes towards him and grabs him by the waist. Vincent then leaps into the air before flipping backwards and slamming Excalibur's head into the ground. As Vincent lands on his feet, he turns to see Excalibur standing there dazed. Vincent then rushes at him before throwing out a powerful right hook, but as he throws out his punch, Excalibur roars, launching out a wave of fire that lights Vincent on fire. Excalibur then slashes at Vincent with his claws, cutting into his chest before he leans back and throws out a powerful palm strike that causes Vincent to go flying through the forest. Excalibur then quickly starts to run through the new opening in the forest in search of his opponent, but as he runs through the forest, he sees a tree flying through the air towards him. Excalibur barely manages to jump over the flying log before he starts to charge up his hand in flames as he starts to lunge downwards at Vincent. Vincent quickly lifts up his leg and engulfs in flames as Excalibur approaches. Once Excalibur is mere inches from the ground, Vincent unleashes his kick, hitting Excalibur in the face and causing an explosion that launches Excalibur back into the large clearing in the forest. As Vincent approaches, Excalibur flies towards him in a ball of fire, hitting Vincent slightly in the air and lighting him on fire. As Vincent starts to fall back down, Excalibur jumps up and grabs grabs his body before throwing him into the ground. As Vincent's body slams to the ground, dust erupts up all around them from the impact, as Excalibur ignites his claws before stabbing him into Vincent's chest and creating a blast of fire that, that burns the dust around them, turning it to ash. Excalibur then rips his claws from Vincent's chest as he gets up and draws his sword. As Excalibur raises his sword into the air, Vincent gets up and hits him with a powerful rising flip kick, hitting Excalibur into the air and sending his sword flying through the air. Excalibur then tries to reorient himself mid-air, but before he can get the chance, Vincent slams his leg down on him with a powerful axe kick as they both plummet down to the ground. As 
As they land, Excalibur manages to barely roll away from Vincent, who then dashes forward before kicking Excalibur in the head. As Excalibur tries to stumble back from the attack, Vincent grabs him by the neck before throwing him down and punching him in the throat. Vincent then jumps high into the air and gets ready to crash back down on Excalibur head first, but as he approaches, Excalibur unleashes a powerful blast of fire that burns Vincent and knocks him out of the air. Excalibur then encases himself into fire before dashing into Vincent, burning him, where Excalibur then proceeds to grab him and pull him in close. Excalibur bites into Vincent's shoulder and tears out a chunk of flesh. Vincent yells out in pain as Excalibur headbutts him, launching him into the ground as Excalibur lands and roars out, sending a massive wave of fire that lights the forest ablaze. Vincent stands up bleeding from his shoulder to see flames burning the forest around him. Excalibur starts to rush at Vincent before leaping through the air towards him. Vincent dodges to the left and intercepts Excalibur's pounce with a right hook as he launches Excalibur back and into a tree. Vincent then sprints towards him before leaping through the air with a flaming dropkick that hits Excalibur in the chest, launching him through the tree. As the tree crashes down, Excalibur throws out a fireball at Vincent, who's running straight towards him. As the fireball approaches, Vincent slides under it as he approaches Excalibur, who intercepts with a flurry of claw swipes and starts to shred into Vincent, before he finishes the barrage with a flaming palm strike to the chest, causing Vincent to slide back. Excalibur then rushes at Vincent, who swiftly dodges to the right and spin kicks Excalibur in the gut, causing him to slide back a few feet. Vincent then lifts up his leg and starts to ignite it into flames. Excalibur sees his opportunity to win the fight as he rushes at Vincent, but as he gets closer, Excalibur's sword finally falls back down as Vincent then kicks the handle with his Vincent kick, igniting the blade and launching it straight at Excalibur. The burning sword then flies through towards Excalibur and hits him dead on, impaling him through the chest. Excalibur rips the blade from his chest, causing him to bleed as he swings it at Vincent. Vincent quickly ducks under the slash before uppercutting the blade from Excalibur's hands into the air, right before he gut punches Excalibur, causing him to stumble back. As Excalibur stumbles back, his blade falls back down as Vincent spin kicks the sword, launching it at Excalibur. The sword nails Excalibur dead on and impales him through the head, tearing it off and pinning it to the burning tree behind him, as Excalibur's headless body collapses, bleeding all over the forest floor. The barrier around the burning forest drops as the bloody and beaten Vincent exits the forest in search of his friends. Oh, holy shit, why was that so graphic? Well, we did just pin an old man up against an actual lion from hell. And somehow the old man won. Uh, touche, I suppose. Well, our winner is Vincent, and oh man, was this a total stomp. Yeah, this was simply not a fight Excalibur could have won. And a quick look at strength and durability should really show you why. Especially taking a look at Vincent, who in his first appearance managed to easily decimate the cast of Super Smash Brothers, who could fight and beat Master Hand, who created the Smash Brothers universe. On top of that, he's managed to defeat Dark Vincent, who destroyed a timeline, and Vincent's even beaten Galeem, who had full control over several Master Hands, and he could even one-shot Taboo. This would mean that Vincent is easily at a multiversal level of power. Excalibur, on the other hand, has been stated by Alfred to be seven times stronger than Zetaburn, who could burn down a whole town and should be comparable to other rivals like Absa, who created a storm that could cover an entire mountain range. The power output needed to do that would require at least mountain levels of force. If you add that seven times multiplier to Absa's storm feat, we can get Excalibur's max damage output to a high end of about large mountain level, which is nowhere near Vincent's casual universal strength, let alone his multiversal power. But let's go ahead and go to the extreme and talk about Jericho the OK, who Alfred has said Excalibur is strong stronger than. Jericho was able to single-handedly beat the Gatekeepers, who previously needed the combined power of all eight rivals to take down. However, even if we scale Excalibur to Jericho and assume that Excalibur is seven times stronger than Jericho, Excalibur would still only be hitting about island level. So let's go ahead and ignore all of that and take a look at three questionable feats that could give Excalibur a chance in this fight and why they don't really work or matter in the sense of this fight. The first one would be his ability to stab his sword into the air. I mean, he potentially stabbed into the universe which is badass and would require an ass load of strength. You see, the problem with that, though, is that there's no evidence to support they stabbed into the universe other than part of his blade vanishing. But even if this was a universal feat, it's not supported by anything, especially since Excalibur has lost other rivals like Sandburn, who have no feats anywhere near universal. Okay, what about him fighting and holding his own against Luigi for most of the fight? That has to be super impressive. Well, you see, the problem is that's Rivals of the Eighth, their workshop Luigi. It's not the canon one from Super Mario Bros., or even the Smash Bros. version. And even if we assume this was the Smash Bros. incarnation of Luigi, Excalibur ended up losing that fight. Okay, well, didn't we mention that he fought Major, who went on to be part of the CPUCS? Yeah, Excalibur did beat Major, but that was Major controlling a rival's character, not the sword fighter we see in the CPUCS. Hell, the CPUCS didn't even exist back then, so even if he did fight Major, it's not like he had any feats Excalibur could have scaled to. Well, shit, Excalibur was really outclassed in power. But what about speed? Excalibur is super fucking fast. He could probably at least keep up in this fight, right? Well, Vincent is fast enough to fight the cast of Super Smash Brothers who can fight Master Hand, and Master Hand can fly across galaxies in mere seconds. 
seconds. On top of that, Vincent fought Gleam, whose light attacks covered an entire galaxy in mere moments, easily making Vincent massively faster than light. Excalibur, on the other hand, can dodge fireballs from Zetaburn and lightning bolts from Absa, making Excalibur massively hypersonic in terms of combat speed. But the Hell Beast isn't completely outclassed. He did once read Major through time and space, meaning he could predict Vincent's attacks and avoid encounter them accordingly. Well, yeah, but there's no way in hell that he can predict everything Vincent's going to do, and even if he could, Excalibur lacks the speed necessary to counter Vincent, even if he saw the attack coming from a mile away. Damn it! Well, uh, isn't Excalibur the more skilled fighter? Well, Vincent has won several tournaments against trained warriors from across the Light Realm and Dark Realm, and taken on and beaten several warriors who have also won multiple tournaments. Yeah, but Excalibur is so skilled that anyone who plays him can't use him to his fullest potential, and both Major and Alpharad have tried. And need I remind you that Major went on to fight in the CPUCS, and Alpharad has beaten Hungrybox in a game of Smash Ultimate, and he trained Hard DK, who has beaten some of the best Smash Brothers players of all time. Well, yeah, we could honestly go back and forth on who's the more skilled combatant and who's more intelligent, but it really doesn't matter when Excalibur can't dodge, let alone survive a single attack from Vincent. I mean, this fight is basically a kitten versus a bear that's on steroids and speed and was holding a fucking sword. In other words, that's one really dead cat. Damn it, why did the cool one have to die? Looks like Vincent painted a pretty clear picture for Excalibur that he was one rival he couldn't beat. Our winner is Vincent. I can't breathe right now, dude. If anyone lands in the cannon, it's curtain for them. Is that it for curtain? No. <laughs> the eye down. Oh, no, watch out. That's a dangerous place to play. God. What? No! Yeah. Next time on Combo Breaker. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? Alright, before we get into anything else, I want to give a huge thanks to Biffweed for helping me out with the Excalibur research. He definitely shaved off a lot of extra time it would have taken me to research Excalibur. I also, again, want to give a huge shout out to Chell for the amazing renders that she made of me and my co-host. Again, her Twitter will be linked in the description down below, and I really hope you guys go check it out. She does amazing artwork. Uh, on top of all that, though, if y'all enjoyed the episode, you should consider subscribing and maybe sharing the video with some friends. But if you really want to go the extra miles to support this channel, I've got a Patreon link in the description down below, and even some t-shirts linked down that you can buy as well. Because, <laughs> every penny helps. I can't get a pizza shipped to this universe because some jackass destroyed the Pizza Hut. Why would you eat the Pizza Hut when you could just order a pizza? <laughs> Fucking Gygus, man. Any amount of support helps, even if it's just subscribing or liking, but, uh, Patreon really helps. But that's definitely enough promotion for me. As you guys may or may not have noticed, the next battle is going to be Bowser vs. Dracula. A battle of retro monster kings, but only one can come out on top in a fight to the death. But, uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say about it, so let me know who you think is going to win the next battle in the comments down below, and what you think of the match in general, and have a wonderful day, guys.